when an object carries a net charge, it either loses a certain number of electrons or gains a number of electrons. So as long as we are not referring to subatomic particles, the amount of net charge an object can carry is always a whole number times the elementary charge. This is called the charge quantization. We use lowercase or uppercase Q for charges. The standard unit for charge is the capital C, Coulomb, named after French physicist Charles Coulomb, whose law we will be studying in this lesson. N is a whole number, and uh, the lowercase e is the elementary charge. The elementary charge e is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulomb. You do not have to memorize this. The elementary charge is the amount of charge an electron carries. It is also the amount of charge a proton carries. E itself is a positive number. And this means uh, if you have an electron, an electron carries uh, negative 1 e of charge and a proton carries a positive 1 e of charge. By the way, Coulomb is actually a huge unit for static charge. The amount of net charge in a rubbed plastic rod is probably about 10 to the negative 9 Coulomb. However, when we study electric circuits in the next unit, you will find that Coulomb is a normal size unit. In an electric circuit, we can easily have a few Coulombs of charge flowing by every second. Now let's look at the Coulomb's law. Published in 1785 by Charles Coulomb, Coulomb's law is very similar to Newton's law of gravitation. For two pieces of point mass, m1 and m2, a distance r away, the gravitational force between the two is big G times m1, m2 over r squared. The Coulomb's law says, the electric force between two point charges, q1 and q2, a distance r away, it is a constant k, times q1 times q2 divided by the distance squared. Both these laws are what we call the inverse square law because the forces are inversely proportional to the distance squared. Charles Coulomb developed the law after performing experiments similar to that of Henry Cavendish. Remember, Cavendish was the first person to measure the big G for Newton's law of gravitation. Coulomb used torsion balance like this when this charge gets repelled by that charge, the wire here twists until it reaches a balance. When the torque produced by the repulsive force here equal to the untwisting torque produced by this wire. This constant K here is 9 times 10 to the 9th. What do you think the unit for K is? If we solve for k over here, we will see the k equals to the electric force times the r squared divided by q1 times q2. Therefore, the unit for k must be newtons times meter squared divided by coulomb squared. This k is sometimes written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught where the epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space, or vacuum. Epsilon naught equals to 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th. And you do not have to memorize the k or the epsilon naught. In this course, when we work on Coulomb's law problems, we will treat the charges as point charges. So we do not have to worry about the effect of polarization or induced charge separation.